GI stasis in rabbits is no joke. This is where the gut slows down or stops, and if swift action is not taken, your rabbit can die. One way to help prevent stasis is to make sure you are not overfeeding a measured pellet. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, as well as some feeding tips and pellet recommendations. I also consulted with Dr. David Sherwood from Sherwood Pet Health, and I'm going to be sharing some of his feeding advice as well. So stick around. What's up, everybody? I'm Diane from Hooks Hollands, bringing you rabbit info and bunnertainment since 2015. Today's video is an extremely important topic. You might want to take notes or save the video to watch later when you have more time. Please remember that I am not a veterinarian. I have a degree in elementary education, and that certainly does not qualify me to tell you what to do with your bunny. I will share what I have learned through my research and my experience with rabbits, and you can discuss this information with your veterinarian and come up with a plan that is appropriate for your bunny. The first and most important topic I want to discuss is measured feed. I can't stress this enough. No matter what brand of food that your rabbit is eating, make sure you are following the directions for how much to feed your rabbit. Do not overfeed a measured pellet to your rabbit because as I mentioned in the introduction, this can lead to GI stasis, which is very dangerous for rabbits. Overfeeding a measured pellet can cause decreased hay consumption. And if your rabbit is not eating enough hay, there is not going to be adequate fiber in their digestive system in the cecum, which is an area in the hindgut of your rabbit, it's this little pouch and there's a whole lot of fermentation going on. And if there's not enough fiber in there, it is not going to ferment properly and you're going to get an overgrowth of bad bacteria. So if you are feeding too many of a measured pellet, this is a concentrated pellet, your rabbit will eat less hay and this will lead to an overgrowth of bad bacteria. And if that bad bacteria is too much for your rabbit's digestive system to handle, you're going to have symptoms of digestive upset and possibly stasis. This might seem like an obvious recommendation, but what I have been discovering is that there are some people who are switching their rabbit from a free choice food that is not measured to a concentrated food that is measured, and they just aren't understanding the importance of making sure they're not overfeeding that measured pellet. If you want, think of it like a prescription medicine. You wouldn't want to overdose on that. And it's certainly not the same, but you understand the gravity of the situation where you don't want to overfeed this measured pellet. It is concentrated. It will give your rabbit too many nutrients for its system to handle and decrease the amount of hay and water that they will consume. Another reason people might be overfeeding a measured pellet is that they don't know how much their rabbit weighs. If you are just guessing what your rabbit weighs, that can be a big difference in the amount of food you're giving your rabbit, and that can be dangerous. So whether you get a postal scale or if you have a really good bathroom scale or take your rabbit to your veterinarian, get an accurate weight and then follow the feeding directions on the back of the bag. Again, I do want to stress this doesn't matter what brand you are using. If it is a measured, concentrated feed, you need to be careful not to overfeed that pellet. Now that you are aware of the dangers of overfeeding a measured pellet, let's talk about some feeding tips. As I mentioned before, make sure you know your rabbit's weight and feed the appropriate amount based upon the directions on the bag. If you have a younger rabbit, your rabbit's weight can fluctuate, so make sure to check your rabbit's weight periodically and then adjust the amount of feed as needed. My advice would be aim towards the minimum recommended amount of pellets. If your rabbit is in between a recommendation, I would aim for the lower because your rabbit will then eat more hay, yet they'll still be getting the nutrients, the vitamins, the minerals provided by the pellet. You may want to consider a free choice pellet instead. 
And by free choice, I mean it is not a measured pellet. There is enough hay and it is diluted enough so that there is the right ratio of nutrients to the hay to keep adequate fiber going through your rabbit's gut. So if you're hesitant to feed the measured pellet, you're just worried you're going to overfeed and you want to feed a free choice pellet, that might be something you want to consider. Another issue that I have had viewers bring up is that they have multiple rabbits sharing a bowl. And if that's the case, it is extremely difficult to know how much each rabbit is getting and to make sure that one rabbit isn't getting too much and that the other rabbit is getting enough. So if you have multiple bonded rabbits, they're in the same area and you just can't ascertain who's eating what, then maybe a free choice pellet would be safer for you and your bunnies. Encourage your rabbit to eat as much hay as possible. I spoke with Dr. David Sherwood of Sherwood Pet Health. Now he is not a veterinarian, but he does have a PhD in molecular biology. That's a mouthful. And he is the owner of Sherwood Pet Health and they make what I feel are the highest quality rabbit products, rabbit feed, supplements that you can find. And I discussed this topic at length with him and I want to share some of his recommendations for getting your rabbit to eat more hay. He suggests to cut back on greens and veggies. Greens and veggies are extremely high in proteins and sugar. It's kind of like giving your kid a cookie. It's delicious, bunnies love them, and they will eat them instead of the hay. So you do want to limit how much you are feeding of the greens and the veggies and try to only feed them in the morning so that you don't spoil their dinner, which is hay, that they will eat throughout the night. Remember, bunnies are more active at night than during the day. So feeding less of these wet foods will increase the amount of hay they eat. The more hay they eat, the more water they will drink. So they will have more fiber and more water sweeping things through their digestive tract. And that's what you want. I know that is controversial because there are a lot of people who really push the high vegetable diet. And I'm just sharing with you his recommendation. And I agree with that because I have found that I have several rabbits who just can't handle a moderate amount of leafy greens. They'll get the mushy poop it just might throw their digestion off. So be careful how many greens and veggies you feed and consider feeding them in the morning. Another way to get your rabbit to eat more hay is not to feed a pellet that has grains, which are carbohydrates, or sweeteners, such as molasses. Bunnies will love these foods, but the problem is they might reduce the amount of hay they eat or refuse to eat hay at all if they know that they have this delicious pellet that is going to be fed to them. Instead, you might want to try a soy-free, grain-free, hay-based pellet, such as the Sherwood pellet that we are going to discuss here in a moment. So you want your rabbit to eat as much hay as possible, and you know that the pellets filled with grain and sweeteners is not conducive for them to eat more hay. So what pellet should you feed your bunny? And that's obviously a decision you need to make with your veterinarian but I will give you my recommendations. I have used Sherwood brand rabbit pellets with my bunnies for years, and I'm not affiliated with them. They are not sponsoring this. I am just sharing with you what I think the highest quality pellet is. Sherwood pellets are grain-free, they are soy-free, they don't have the sweeteners, they are hay-based. Sherwood offers several varieties of adult rabbit pellets, and I know this can be confusing to a lot of people because you don't know what the difference is between the formulas or which one is right for your bunny. So I'm going to try to simplify that for you today as well as share some changes that are coming in their line of adult rabbit feeds. Sherwood currently offers one free choice rabbit pellet and that is this blue bag alfalfa timothy based pellet. They currently have two different measured feeds. This is a concentrated pellet. They have the red bag, which is the professional, and that has alfalfa and timothy in it. And then they have their timothy-based pellet in the green bag. That is a newer pellet, I believe that came out the end of last year, back in 2019. The exciting news is that there is now going to be 
a second free choice food for adult rabbits offered by Sherwood. This is also going to be in a blue bag, but this one, instead of being Timothy and alfalfa based, is going to be a Timothy based free choice food. So you do not need to measure it. Now, I was told that this food is going to be available within the coming weeks. So if you are interested in a free choice rabbit food and you would prefer the Timothy based pellet instead of a Timothy alfalfa based pellet that is in the current blue bag, then this new blue bag free choice Timothy might be something to consider. Eventually, Dr. Sherwood said they will transition to just offering the two different Timothy based options, the free choice and the measured pellet. But don't be concerned if you are still on the alfalfa Timothy measured pellet or the alfalfa Timothy free choice, they are still currently offering that for quite some time. So you will have plenty of time to transition if and when you decide to do that. You might be wondering, well, why are they going away from the alfalfa Timothy blend and focusing on the Timothy? This was what Dr. Sherwood had to say. Nutritionally speaking, I personally feel alfalfa in a formulated food is a healthy source of nutrients when it is part of a balanced diet. Alfalfa alone is not healthy nor balanced. I also recognize that many of you have vets that feel otherwise. Though many vets are more educated now and promote Sherwood's balanced foods to solve urinary sludge problems. For this reason, I worked to make a healthy balanced diet that did not include alfalfa, eliminating any possibility of GMOs, that's genetically modified organisms. And the result is the new Timothy pellets. I'm very excited about the results because the nutritional value of the protein, balanced essential amino acids, and improved digestibility in the new Timothy pellets is superior to Sherwood's original formulas, which were superior to all other formulas that were available at the time. Together, we will continue to raise the bar for pet nutrition and health. My take on it is that they are removing the alfalfa more due to the demand of the consumer. Although Dr. Sherwood did say that the value of the protein in the new Timothy pellet is superior to the original formulas. Food for thought. And hopefully that simplifies things for you a bit. Sherwood is going to offer two free choice foods, one with alfalfa, one without, and two measured concentrated foods, one with alfalfa, one without transitioning eventually to the complete Timothy formulas in free choice and the measured. Sherwood also offers a baby rabbit pellet that I have used with my babies with lots of success and no weaning issues. This is typically fed through about 12 weeks of age. And Dr. Sherwood says, yes, they eventually plan to remove the alfalfa from this formula as well, but this is something that they are going to do down the road around a year and a half out or so. So that won't be changing anytime soon. There are certainly many other types of rabbit pellets to consider, but the vast majority of these either have grains, soy, sweeteners, or a combination of these. I also know that a lot of you are having trouble obtaining Sherwood. You do have to order it online through Amazon or the company's website, and I will put those links below but it's currently not available in pet stores. And I know getting it internationally, such as you guys up in the frozen north in Canada, can be difficult. I conducted a poll on the YouTube community here a few days ago. It currently has 384 votes, and I asked, which soy-free rabbit pellets have you fed to your bunny and are happy with? 24% of you are currently feeding the Sherwood to your adult rabbits, and that's fantastic. This doesn't include their baby food or those of you who might be feeding the red bag professional because I didn't include those in the poll options here. So 11% are on the blue bag. That is the Timothy Alfalfa Free Choice Sherwood. 13% are feeding the green bag. That is the measured concentrated Timothy based pellet. Now 51% of you, which blew my mind, <laughs> are feeding the Oxbow Garden Select. Let me just stop here really quick and caution you, Oxbow has quite a few different rabbit pellets that they offer. And out of that line of rabbit pellets, 
the one that I would recommend the most is their Garden Select. This, to my knowledge, is the only one they offer that doesn't have the soy. However, it does have some grain in it. So Sherwood has a leg up on them with being grain free as well as soy free and sweetener free. So the Garden Select doesn't have the sweeteners, it doesn't have the soy, but it does have some grain in it. This is a brown bag and it can be a bit difficult to find. Sometimes it's on Amazon, but I have found that Petco offers, I believe the four pound bag and then the 25 pound bag and I got free shipping on it. I did order it. I'm going to test it out, but I still prefer the Sherwood. Another option might be the Modesto Milling. It's an organic pellet. Only 1% of you are using that. I have tried that and I've tried it twice over the years. It's, I think it's just really crumbly and the rabbits did take to it okay. It also has an ingredient that I'm a little uncertain about. It is a fermentation product. And when I questioned the company on it years ago, they didn't have a good answer for me. Unlike Sherwood, where Dr. Sherwood, the owner, discussed in depth the different ingredients in his recommendations. I just feel more confident in Sherwood as a company and their transparency and the research behind their products than a company like Modesto who really couldn't give me a good answer. And that one is difficult to obtain as well. Unless you have an Azure standard drop near you, you can get the large bag from Modesto for a pretty good price. The only other way to get it is I think Amazon sells it and Chewy.com, I believe. Probably the two most common other types of rabbit foods you said you were using would be the Small Pet Select and the Oxbow Red Bag Food. Now the Small Pet Select, I am looking at the ingredient list here, soybean hulls, soybean meal, wheat middlings, molasses, soybean oil, barley, and the list goes on. So a lot of rabbits have done well, I have been told on this food, but it is not soy free, it is not grain free, and it has a sweetener in it. The Oxbow Red Bag Food, which I think is definitely more readily available than their Brown Bag Garden Select, it has soybean hulls, soybean meal, cane molasses, wheat middlings, so very similar to the Small Pet Select food. That is why I currently recommend Sherwood food as my favorite rabbit food to feed my rabbits. I try to give them the best that I can. It is not the cheapest food, so if you have multiple rabbits to feed, it does get expensive, believe me. I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars on it, but I wouldn't do that if I didn't feel it was the best choice I could offer my rabbits. Grain-free, soy-free, sweetener-free, and a very transparent company who is willing to answer your questions that you have. Speaking of questions, I did ask Dr. Sherwood a couple more questions and I thought you might be interested in his response. I'm pretty sure he was sick of my questions, but I'm happy that I am able to share this information with thousands of you so he doesn't have to reiterate this to everybody. My question was, should his free feed foods the alfalfa timothy current blue bag or the new timothy free choice blue bag should they be fed in limited quantities to encourage increased hay consumption his answer was that most bunnies will do just fine eating the free choice pellet fed to them freely he continued that most people who measure find that their bunnies still graze on the pellet throughout the 24-hour feeding period and don't always finish their pellet Having said this, we still see many bunnies begin to eat more hay while fed this pellet free choice. Why? I have two guesses. First, they just get used to eating more hay and don't expect any grains or treats. Second, I believe the bacteria in their cecum adapt to the diet and process the hay more efficiently and it makes it possible for the rabbits to eat more hay. However, some bunnies have a different metabolic rate Mini Rex rabbits are often in this category and limiting their pellets would be beneficial. This advice applies to both the current blue bag, that's the adult Timothy blend, and the new one, which is the Timothy pellet that is also fed free choice. However, the protein energy ratio of the new free choice Timothy pellet has been tweaked a little from the original formula. 
it has been changed to favor a lower energy content relative to the protein, which will favor more muscle gain and fat loss. So you don't need to measure the free choice pellet. However, I will say in the years that I have used the blue bag alfalfa Timothy, I do like to measure for a couple reasons. I want to make sure that they are eating throughout the day. If you just dump a bunch of pellets in their bowl, it is difficult to ascertain how much they are eating. So I tend to feed an eighth to a fourth cup to my Holland Lops in the morning and then up to that same amount in the evening. And they rarely will finish it all. And I always offer them as much hay as they can. But like he said, it really depends on your rabbit's metabolic rate and you might want to talk to your veterinarian and find out what would be best even if you are feeding the free choice pellet. I also asked him for those people who want to transition from the measured Timothy pellet, that's the green bag, to the alfalfa Timothy blend free choice pellet, do they need to have a transition period since the food they are transitioning to has alfalfa in it. And here is his response. It is always safer to make your bunnies dietary changes slowly. However, with changing from the green bag, which is the measured Timothy pellet, to the blue bag, the current blue bag, that is a free choice Timothy alfalfa, I feel that the change is safe as long as the bunny grazes on the pellets, which is typical for Sherwood pellets, rather than wolfing them all down which is typical for a grain-based pellet. I think this is most applicable to people who are currently feeding their bunnies the green measured Timothy pellet, and you're just concerned about overfeeding your rabbit a concentrated pellet, and you might wanna go back to the alfalfa Timothy blue bag free choice pellet that you had fed previously. So you're wondering how to make that transition. And as he said, as long as your bunny is not scarfing them all down at once, then you really shouldn't have to have a transition period. My recommendation would be if you want to go from the measured Timothy to the new free choice Timothy that's coming out soon, maybe just hold off and keep feeding the measured green Timothy until the new free choice Timothy is available. And then you really won't have to worry about transitioning to the new food because it won't have the alfalfa in it. It'll be very similar, just a diluted food has extra hay in it. So that's my recommendation. Again, talk about this with your veterinarian. Remember, your ultimate goal is to get your rabbit eating lots of hay and therefore drinking plenty of water to keep the gut moving. It is extremely important to make sure you are feeding the measured pellets in the appropriate amounts. You need to know the weight of your rabbit and stay within the recommended guidelines or err on the side of caution and feed a slightly smaller amount. Keep an eye on your rabbit's poop to know any changes in size or quantity so that you can contact your veterinarian if you feel that your rabbit might be having stasis symptoms. Another tip is to feed fewer treats. If you are feeding greens, try to feed those in the morning. And I really don't recommend many fruits, even bits of carrot. That is tough on the rabbits due to all the sugar and the carbohydrates. So keep those to a minimum, if at all, and never feed those to a baby rabbit under six months. Try to find a food that has the best ingredients possible. If you can, soy-free, grain-free, sweetener-free, that's the best. As always, please consult with your veterinarian about your rabbit's diet before you make any changes or decide what to feed your rabbit. I know this video was filled with a ton of information and probably was overwhelming, but once I realized how many people were underestimating the importance of not overfeeding a measured pellet, and myself included, I'm guilty of this, I really felt passionate about getting this information out to you as soon as possible. And hopefully it will help save some bunnies' lives and keep those guts moving. If you would like to continue watching my videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so that you are notified when I post my next video. Thanks for watching. And now for the bunny fact of the day. Did you know that rabbits are actually not nocturnal? They are crepuscular, and this means they are most active during the morning and the evening, just like wild rabbits, and they sleep during the middle part of the day and the middle part of the night. So it's 10 a.m. right now, and as I look around the room, 
all four bunnies are sprawled out and taking naps. If you want to keep a bunny in your room, this is something to keep in mind. If you like to go to sleep early or sleep in late, you might have issues with your bunny waking you up. Camilla, you're getting heavy. It's like holding a bag of sugar for about 10 minutes here. My arm's starting to shake. I guess it's a good workout, isn't it? This is Camilla. She is almost five years old. She is a broken orange Holland Lop Doe. She's just like a fuzzy marshmallow. I love her so much. My other rabbits would not tolerate being held like this and be as content as she is. So that's why I selected her for part of my video segment today. So if your rabbit doesn't like to be held like this, don't worry, that's completely normal especially when you are carrying your rabbit. If I started moving, she would not like that, but she can't really see how high up she is right now. So she's pretty mellow. And she's also quite used to me handling her, so that helps as well. GI stasis in rabbits is no joke. This is where the gastrointestinal tear. All right, I gotta show you Ivan. He's over there on my bed. He's just zonked out. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Did I bore you to sleep?